This is my favorite lens. It's not the most expensive, it's not even new, but there's something about the image that I get off of the lens that I just love. There's this magic quality while using the lens that gives your photos and your videos just a little bit of character. I mean, just look at some of these clips. Now, you might have to forgive my focus polling because it is a manual focused lens, but I think you can kind of see what I mean. There's this quality, this character to the image that is just kind of special. So what exactly is this lens? This little beauty is the Contax Zeiss 50 millimeter F1.4 Planar MMJ. Now there is an older version of this lens called the AEJ, which was manufactured in the 1970s in Germany. However, the MMJ was manufactured after 1984 in Japan. Now, I can't exactly tell you why you want the MMJ over the AEJ. Uh, however, in my research, it seemed just in general, most people preferred the slightly newer MMJ Japanese manufactured context size planar lens. So that's the one I have. And let me just tell you, the build quality is superb. For this lens being nearly 40 years old, it is in perfect condition. It has a high quality, all metal housing with very, very low tolerances. You can really feel it when you're moving the focus ring. I mean, it is unbelievably smooth. Not to mention the aperture ring clicking, whether you like declicked or not declicked is very satisfying as well. Now, if you're looking for a clinical, perfect lens, well, this is just not for you. There are many flaws, if you want to call them flaws, with this lens that a lot of people may not like. Firstly, below f4 while using this lens, you're gonna not have very circular bokeh. It's actually gonna be kind of the star-shaped pattern because it only has, I believe, six aperture blades and a lot of people may not like that they might consider the bokeh a bit on the distracting side however for me personally i think it is quite cool and it gives your footage a little bit extra character now f4 and above you're going to smooth out those star shape patterns and it become more of a hexagon shape which again i think looks pretty cool Additionally, like with other lenses, you're gonna run into issues when shooting this thing wide open. You will lose a bit of sharpness in the corners of your image. The center's pretty much fine. You also have some contrast issues if that's gonna be a problem for you. But once you get up to 2.8, I do find that a lot of that goes away. Uh, so that's just something else to keep in mind with this lens, it's not perfect. But those issues don't really bother me. In fact, I think that the flaws are kind of what makes it special or stand out. I do really enjoy the character that you're getting on a lot of these vintage lenses, but especially with this lens, the Planar 50 millimeter. In fact, I'm using it right now in this A-roll shot so you can kind of see what the quality looks like. And honestly, I think this looks pretty good. By the way, I'm also using this really compact small rig light back there as my kicker light, which is, I think, adding a nice little touch to this A-roll shot here. Now, to be upfront with you guys, small rig did send me this light, but I do find it to be pretty cool. I do like it as my nice little kicker light behind me. And if you wanna check it out for yourself and consider snagging it, well, there'll be a link down in the description. So I actually took this lens with me to CES in Las Vegas, where Chris Brockhurst, Terry Warfield, Cam Mackey, and I ventured off to this really interesting ghost town. They were all making some pretty cool content, so I'll be sure to link it down below in the description, but I used this opportunity in this really cool place to just snap some photos. And I absolutely adored shooting with this lens. There's something about using a manual lens while taking photos that really connects you to your camera. It's a lot like for me when I've been shooting with my film cameras, although that's even another step forward because you're using film instead of a digital camera, but you do get a little bit of a taste of that when using these vintage lenses, and especially this Contax Zeiss lens, which produce some pretty beautiful photos. Now, Cam Mackey got to use this lens briefly while we were hanging out, and he had a few thoughts on this Zeiss lens that he was willing to share. So what's really cool about manual is you, it forces, it, it stops your brain and you're like, wait, let me pay attention to what I'm doing here because it's, it's a lot of effort and time to do it. So it's really fun putting it into manual mode, but there's something different when you're doing like a vintage glass like this, because you can see the character and like the different look in it. So it kind of motivates your creativity to, you know, kind of chase the shot. Like versus like if I was to put an autofocus lens here and just put it in manual, 
it's not exactly the same thing, especially focused by wire. Yeah, it is interesting how different it feels. Now, one of the things that's been slowing me down is I love shooting on film. Obviously, this is not the same thing, but it does give you a little bit of that slow down process, yeah. but on the powerful Sony cameras. Yeah, and it's actually, viewfinders come into play a lot. The fact that the A7R5 has like one of the best viewfinders, mm -hmm. you know, it, it eases my eye a little bit. When I shoot film, my face, my brain feels like <laughs> it's like screaming yeah. and like, you is know, it's about to explode. Prism, trying to find focus? That, just any film, just because my my vision's bad. Okay, but yeah. if you have a big viewfinder, it helps. But overall, it just kind of motivates you to, you know, be a photographer. We kind of miss that when we have all these amazing pieces of computers in our hands with lenses on them when it does everything for you kind of makes you lazy and take for granted the experience versus a manual lens like this. Now the thing with this lens that you have to consider if you're going to look for one is that they can be a bit hard to find. I've been looking for one for a while and it's hard to find one at a decent price that's actually good quality. Now I got really lucky. I actually recently on my trip to Germany happened to go to a flea market and there happened to be a guy who happened to have one who happened to not know exactly maybe what it was worth, but kind of knew it was worth something. So I snagged mine for about 140 euros, which is a really great deal for the condition of this one. But typically I see them going for about 450 bucks, I would say. You can find them for cheaper, of course, but it all comes down to the quality of each individual lens. Hopefully you all see what I'm talking about with why this has become my favorite lens and i don't know i just kind of rambled for a second but hopefully you all enjoyed this video on these vintage lenses if you want to see more vintage lens content please let me know down in the comments i would love to continue making it if it's something you all are interested in by the way we just hit 90,000 subscribers on this channel that is really incredible thanks to anyone who subscribed to this channel over the last year it means a lot we're on the way to 100,000 so if you don't mind it would mean a lot if you hit the subscription button just to help me get to that vanity number that probably doesn't mean anything but it would make me feel good so i hope you all enjoyed the content and i will see you in the next one take it easy guys